Good morning. I'm Pastor Norman, and welcome to Happy Grace United Methodist Church, where we learn and grow as followers of Jesus Christ to serve others and to transform lives here across the street and around the world. In keeping with medical guidance, our buildings remain closed until further notice, and so we are coming to you by live stream. Thank you for joining us from around town and around the state and across the nation and around the world. We are glad that you are joining us. Our Reopening Well Task Force continues planning for reuniting safely 2020. We will be very cautious as we value human life and health. The coronavirus is not weary, although we may be. And our buildings are shut, but the church never closed. The church office has resumed regular, normal operating hours, uh, but is not open to the general public. So if you want to come into the office, call Christine, our church administrator. Let her know that you're planning to come, make arrangements with her, and please wear a mask and maintain distance when you're in the office. We'll be closed this Friday, though, uh, in observance of Independence Day. We have free July-August Upper Room uh, devotional magazines available in both large print and regular size, so just let us know how many you need of which size and whether you want to pick them up or whether you want us to deliver them to you, and we'll be glad to do that. Usually about this time of the year, we celebrate our Sunday school students and teachers. We haven't been able to do that, but we want to honor their faithfulness. And so let me share with you a little bit of what I know that our teachers are doing. Miss Shirley continues to lead our adult class on Zoom, hosted by Miss Tammy. Uh, Mr. Phil stays connected with our senior high young adult class via text message and Zoom. Miss Amy and Miss Jennifer have got our middle schoolers writing to some of our older members, and some of them are writing back now. Miss Julie has produced some online games and videos for grades four and five. Miss Nancy is mailing Sunday school materials to homes, and Miss Phyllis has been staying connected with grades two and three by phone. Mr. Russ and Miss Jeanette are also staying connected with our uh, kindergarten first grade class members. And they're doing all of this for about a dollar a child a week, which is a great deal for Christian education. We are sensitive to the fact that online schoolwork can stress households, and we don't know yet what the school systems will be doing this fall, so stay tuned for more information about that. We have a great education committee chair in Ms. Lisa, a wonderful Sunday school superintendent, and fantastic teachers. We also want you to know that we finished confirmation class via Zoom. We have four young people who are ready to take adult membership vows and be disciples of Christ on purpose when we reopen the building for worship. I did miss a graduate two Sundays ago. Uh, Kaylee Hitchings graduated Havity Grace High School with a number of scholarships and will be attending Hartford Community College with plans to transfer to Towson University and major in forensics. So we want to celebrate uh, with Kaylee about that. Thank you for your continued generosity and faithfulness in supporting Christ's ministry here. Uh, thank you for helping each other out. And thank you for staying safe. Today, Mr. Chris, our praise team accompanist, and Miss Debbie, our music director, are joining forces to bring us God's music, and I'm assisted today in leading worship by Mr. Phil as liturgist. And now, Mr. Phil is going to call us to worship. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 90, verses 1 through 6, 10 and 12. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust, and say, turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning, in the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. The days of our life are seventy years, or perhaps eight if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Now we normally have the sign of passing of God's peace, and naturally since there are only five or six of us here this morning, and we're maintaining our social distance. 
Uh, we do convey that out to all that are watching as a sign of the reconciliation Jesus Christ has made between us and God and our desire to be reconciled with others. We pass God's peace. And may you be the vehicle of peace that is so needed in today's world. May the peace of the Lord be with us all. Our opening hymn is a paraphrase of Psalm 90 by Isaac Watts. Church music in Isaac Watts' day was a pretty poor quality because the Puritan influence, which uh, did not like ornamentation, had reduced the singing to simply singing the Psalms, just singing scripture. And Isaac Watts, as a young person, was complaining to his father about this. And his father said, well, if you don't like it, why don't you write some new hymns? And as a young person, Isaac Watts started writing a hymn every week. He was considered a radical in the day because he not only paraphrased scripture, but he also wrote poetry that expressed human emotion in the hymns. And that was considered very, very radical. And so here now, uh, the lyrics to Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, which is a meditation on time. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne, still may we dwell secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or the earth received her frame, from everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. A thousand years in thy sight are like an evening gone, short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Time, like an ever-rolling stream, bears all who breathe away. They fly forgotten as a dream dies at the opening day. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, be thou our guide while life shall last, and our eternal home. As we get ready to go to God in prayer, I bid your prayers this week for those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19, including several clients where Laurie works. I bid your prayers for all those who are battling COVID-19. New cases have been dropping in Maryland, but are now creeping up again. And across the United States, we are having the highest number of new cases ever. So let's keep all those folk in our prayers. Our sister Nikki is recovering from knee replacement. So I bid your prayers for her and her husband Tom, as he's our primary caregiver. I bid your prayers for Linda, who's a friend of ours, having surgery for cancer this week, a widow with a 14-year-old son. I bid your prayers for Guy, an employee of Brent. Guy is awaiting medical test results. I bid your prayers for Jim, the son of Joan. Jim needs surgery to remove a cancer near his eye, but cannot have that surgery until August. I bid your prayers for Carol Ann's caregiver. Carol Ann is a, is a friend of Linda. He will be having chemo for a very large tumor that's been discovered in his chest. I bid your prayers for David, the 36-year-old son of Dr. Jim. David has an inoperable brain aneurysm. Pray for relief from pain. I bid your prayers for Rosemary, a friend of Linda and Ned. Rosemary is still hospitalized, but she has improved. I bid your prayers for Donald, the son of Jim. Donald is in rehab for foot issues and still off of work. He lives out in Lansing, Illinois. I bid your prayers for Grace, a friend of our sister Carol. She did have surgery and is now awaiting test results. I bid your prayers for Carrie, the daughter of Karen, also a friend of Carol's. Uh, Carrie is recuperating from a second serious stroke, uh, but is home from the hospital. We praise God for that. I bid your prayers for Tracy, another friend of Carol's. Uh, Tracy is done with radiation and chemo. Pray for recuperation and that no more chemo is necessary. I bid your prayers for Ricky, the son of uh, Cindy and Tom. Ricky is in need of a new job. 
I bid your prayers for public health and medical workers and researchers and caregivers everywhere, for those quarantined at home. And given recent protests over police shootings, pray for our nation, for justice, and that we'll be able to come together as a society in better ways. I bid your prayers for pastors and congregations who are going through transition in this season and getting to know each other in spite of the pandemic. Next Sunday, a lot of United Methodist pastors, it'll be their first Sunday in a new pulpit. I bid your prayers for our sisters, Salona and Julie, who are visiting uh, their grandfather and father, Ralph, who is battling cancer. Pray for travel mercies and a good checkup for Ralph this coming week. Let us thank God that Carrie, the daughter of Kathy, uh, is halfway through chemo and looking good, and the chemo will be done in September. Let us thank God that Tom, the uncle of Luann, Luann is a friend of our sister Peg, that Tom had successful surgery and went home from the hospital, and that Sally, Luann's mother, is continuing to be well. Let us praise God that James, a friend of Laurie, uh, James has underlying health issues and was exposed to COVID, has tested negative for that and is symptom-free, and tomorrow will end his quarantine. Let us thank God for medical first responders, makers of medical equipment, the blessings of relationships, and technologies that allow us to stay connected. We praise God that Helen and Ron, our sister and brother, who are owners of Java by the Bay, were married on June the 9th. Congratulations and best wishes. And we have a rosebud on the altar, up here on the altar today. This rosebud is in honor of the birth of Sloan Baker, who was born at 9.12 a.m. on June 15th to Hillary and Stephen, weighing seven pounds, four ounces, and measuring 17 and three-fourths inches. And Zoe is the proud big sister, and Ben and Pam are the proud grandparents. And at least one of our households that has a four-year-old in it is praising God today that the libraries have reopened and they've gotten new library books to read. So with our hearts and minds filled with these joys and concerns, let's go to God in silent prayer as we share with God things that I have not named. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Folk, for some folk, time has indeed stopped, and they have entered into eternity. But their loved ones grieve. So comfort, comfort your people as they mourn. Heal and strengthen all who are ill or in recovery. Grant patience to those who wait, to those who wait for test results, or for medical care, or for surgery, those who wait for a response to a job interview, or wait for quarantines to end, or wait for justice to be done and to be real across our land. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, keep us faithful in the present. Keep us faithful in the present moment. Help us to use time wisely, to speak up when we see wrongs, to encourage the discouraged, to act as your disciples. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Help us to remember our blessings. Thank you for healing and for healers, for caregivers. Thank you for love promises made and kept, for new little lives born among us, for new books to read, and new ways to learn. Thank you for moments when we come together, when we come together in surprising and helpful ways. Through Christ our living Lord, who taught us to pray when it said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth just as it's done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time in the service when I get to talk with the children. And so I want to give a shout out to Zoe and Michael and Lillian and Jesse and Maddie and Evelyn and Camille and Scout and Wyatt and Ian and Bodie and Isabella and Emmy and Ellie and Taylor and Hazel and Iris and Max and Nolan and Eli and Elena and Andrew and Kate and Breezy and Ileana and Sarah, Adeline and Lorelai. And please let me know if I have not named your child so I can name him or her next week. So, you know, sometimes, and maybe you've had this experience, I know I have, it seems like something we want to happen will never happen. It just won't come. Christmas won't come or our birthday won't come and we just have to wait. And sometimes it seems like something that we really enjoy, we're at a party or Christmas Day or whatever, and it's all over too soon. It just flies by. Time is strange that way. Some things seem to drag and we'll never get there. You know, we, we're in the car riding and we say to our parents, are we there yet? You know, and then other things just fly by. But we thank God for the gift of time the gift of time, because God has given us every hour of every day. And so this week, whenever you see a clock, when you see a clock, I want you to say, thank you, God, for time. Thank you, God, for time. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the gift of time, for time to play and time to learn, for time to rest and time to sleep. For time for joy and time for work. Thank you, God, for time. Help us to be patient when things just don't seem like they're coming fast enough. And thank you for the good things that fly by that we enjoy so very much. Through Jesus, our friend. Amen. So this week, remember when you see a clock, when you see a clock, say thank you, God, for time. The epistle lesson this morning is from Ephesians 5, 13 to 20. In this letter, circulated to the churches of Asia Minor, the Apostle Paul, or a close disciple, has been contrasting acts of darkness and acts of light. He urges us to use our time wisely. But everything exposed by light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake! Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
lesson this, uh, this morning is from Luke 14, 1 to 6. A little prelude. Jesus has healed on the Sabbath before, and conflict had followed. Healing was considered work, and work was forbidden on the Sabbath. Now he does it again and silences his critics. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. Just then, in front of him, there was a man who had dropsy, and Jesus asked the lawyers and Pharisees, Is it lawful to cure people on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. So Jesus took him and healed him and sent him away. Then he said to them, If one of you has a child or an ox that has fallen into a well, will you not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not reply to this. Hear, church, what the Spirit says. Thanks be to God. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown a light on things. It's revealed things to us. Now, these are not new things. These are not new truths. They're, they're truths we already knew, but maybe we had forgotten or neglected. But the pandemic is bringing them to our attention again. So we're learning, or maybe relearning would be better to say, relearning some things that we already knew. We're being reminded of things that are important. Today we focus on Christ's call to use our time wisely. To use our time wisely as disciples of Jesus Christ. I suspect that each of us has experienced time differently since the shelter-in-place order was made. For some of us, perhaps those of us living alone, time has dragged on and on, hour after hour, day after day, because our normal activities stopped, we could not visit our friends, and many things we enjoy are no longer safe for us. And so we have had, as we say, time on our hands. We've had time on our hands. And then for others of us, perhaps time has passed just as it always has, in the same way. It really hasn't changed anything. And then for some of us, for some of us, the pandemic has made us feel harried and overworked. There hasn't been enough time, and we feel that we've had less time than we had before. For instance, for those of us deemed essential workers, we may have found that our workload went up. For those of us who were told to work from home, it may have seemed that more was expected of us. For teachers having to switch in midterm from in-person teaching to online learning, it took time to learn new things, new technology, and then time to redesign all the lesson plans. For parents, there was time working at home, and then there was time helping children learn their online lessons. And I have to say, looking around Happy Grace, I saw some very interesting chalk diagrams on the sidewalks where it was clear parents had been teaching children. Sometimes there were phys ed lessons. Sometimes there were lessons in probability and statistics. And there was even one place where I saw a graphing, a mathematical graphing exercise done on the sidewalk. So I know that parents were working hard helping their their children learn. The pandemic may have shifted where and how we have spent time, but it didn't change the fact that every day, each and every one of us was given another 24 hours. That is chronological time, what the New Testament in its original Greek language calls chronos, chronos. But then there is time as we experience it. That's different. Sometimes time drags when we're dreading something or we are bored or we're looking forward to something and it's not coming fast enough. Sometimes time flies by when we're enjoying something or we're deeply absorbed in something we like. Time is weird like that. This is what the New Testament calls kairos, experienced time. So on what things have we been spending our time? Have we perhaps been engaged in online games or watching more TV or Netflix? 
engaged in online gambling. Somebody told me there was a billboard that went up during the pandemic that said something like this, are you bored? Gamble. Strange message. In searching the Bible for guidance around how to use time wisely, I noticed some themes in the scriptures, four themes I want to share. First, time is precious. Time is precious because life is fleeting. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 90, which says, teach us to count our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Sometimes connected with this uh, thought that time is precious and life is fleeting, there's an element of judgment, as when time is said to be short because of the coming day of the Lord. Our epistle lesson today tells us, wake up. Wake up, it says, and use time wisely, for Christ's light is shining. The second theme is do not waste time. Do not be lazy, for instance. Based on John 9, 4, the camp meeting song, Work for the Night is Coming, captures the Victorian morality around time and work. Work for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew is sparkling. Work through mid-springing streaming flowers. Work when the day grows brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is coming when our work is done. Work for the night is coming. Work through the sunny noon. Fill brightest hours with labor. Rest comes sure and soon. Give every flying minute something to keep in store. Work for the night is coming when we work no more. Work for the night is coming under the sunset skies. While their bright tints are glowing, work for the daylight flies. Work till the last beam fadeth, fadeth to shine no more. Work while the night is darkening when our work is o'er. That hymn text always puts me in mind of Garrison Keillor's fictional Roman Catholic Church, Our Lady of Perpetual Responsibility. But John Wesley, founder of Methodism, did say, do not trifle away time. There's a third theme in the scriptures around time that's sort of set in opposition to that theme. And this is the theme around taking care of ourselves. Unless the Lord is in our work, anxious toil, it says, is a waste. We rest in the truth that our times are in God's hands. That is to say, we're called to self-care, not to anxious or endless self-destructive toil. And finally, there's a fourth theme around time in the Bible, and that is that we are to use our time to spread God's good news. The pandemic is an opportunity to reassess where we're investing our time. Now, the business world, the business world says time is money, and that is true. We trade our labor for money when we work. We loan our money to banks or the stock market for, for a time. In exchange for interest or dividends or appreciated value, we buy things on credit or on time, as we say, or take out loans and pay interest for the privilege of getting things sooner than we could by saving for them, a decision that requires some wisdom. In terms of Christian stewardship, not only our checkbook, but our calendar shows our priorities, for our calendar shows where we invest our time. So distilling what the Bible says about time, Christ calls us to use our time for prayer, for self-care, and for ministry. For prayer, self-care, and ministry. Only I think that these will be different and in different measure for each of us, depending where we are in our spiritual journey. For those of us who are restless with time on our hands, the call to prayer reminds us to use our time to pray for the world, and the world surely needs it. The ancient Christian practice, often associated with monasteries, of praying the hours comes to mind. Sometimes it's called the divine office or the liturgy of the hours. It took the Jewish practice of reciting psalms through the day and applied it to the Roman commercial day. As the bells in the market rang the hours, Christians would be reminded to pray at 6 and 9 a.m., at noon, at 3 and 6 p.m., and so on. What a wonderful way to bless, to sanctify, to hallow the day. The call to prayer is a call to focus on God.
And prayer is not the only Christian faith practice like that. There are other ones that we can take up besides prayer. But prayer leads directly to Christ's call to self-care. For structuring the day with prayer helps with the sense of chaos, the sense of lostness the pandemic has brought some of us. A number of you have said that our Sunday worship service has helped you structure the week. When one day seems the same as the next, Sunday worship gives us a healthy and helpful pattern of time. It is one way to engage in the ancient practice of Sabbath, Sabbath rest to structure life. One of the struggles some of us have shared is that when working from home, it seems like work is never done. We're never off from our job. It's been harder to balance work and life. What we need in this case is stronger boundaries, boundaries between work and home, but that's precisely what is hard to establish. That's precisely what's broken down and what's violated by having to work from home. So structure helps. Structure helps us in that case, even if it's arbitrary. On this day, I do this. At this hour, I do, th do this. Personally, I try to take a walk every day at four o'clock. There's nothing magic about four o'clock. It's just when I need a break. Working from home also eliminates transitional time. Psychologists have told us that the commute home, as stressful as the traffic may be, allows us to unhook and withdraw from work and begin to re-enter into our life at home so that when we step through the front door, we're ready to engage. Along the same line, psychologists have pointed out that a similar issue faces soldiers returning from war. GIs after World War II came home on slow-moving troop ships, on board which they could process their experiences with chaplains or with their officers, or maybe most significantly with other GIs who had the same experience. Perhaps we have done a disservice to some of our more recent veterans by flying them home too quickly from the battlefield to their front door. So the call to prayer focuses us on God. The divine call to self-care focuses us on ourselves, on nurturing our spirit. And finally, Christ calls us to use our time for ministry, for ministry. In our gospel lesson, Jesus is in conflict with the religious authorities over observing the Sabbath, something we just said is important for structure and health and for self-care. But there's a man in front of Jesus. A man is there in front of Jesus with dropsy. Dropsy is an old-fashioned term for swelling or retention of fluid, maybe from kidney failure or congestive heart failure. It's something serious. Dropsy appears in one of the episodes of the TV series Downton Abbey, where it's treated in a new way. So Jesus confronts the religious establishment with a question. Is it lawful to cure folk on the Sabbath? The practice of medicine was understood to be work and therefore forbidden on the Sabbath. By his questions in this passage, Jesus is not just talking to the religious establishment. He is asking us, how do we use our time to hurt or to heal others? Christ calls us to focus on God through prayer, on ourselves through self-care, and on others through ministry. And ministry, my friends, is always essential. But I must add a caveat to ministry that relates to self-care. During the pandemic, we must weigh the issue of safety in what we do. Safety for ourselves and safety for others. So in the midst of the COVID pandemic, we're challenged to ponder our use of time for Christ calls us to use our time wisely in prayer, in self-care, and in ministry. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ our Lord invites all who love him to earnestly repent of our sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. God of all seasons of life, we confess that we have often squandered your gifts. We have wasted our days and misused our hours. Heal and redeem us 
Help us use wisely the gift of time that we may grow in our relationship with you, nurture our souls, and serve you by serving others. Through Christ our Lord, the Word who was with you from the beginning of time. Amen. And now let us make our own humble and silent confessions before our loving God. Hear now the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Fanny Crosby, the famous blind hymn writer, had the amazing ability to take a single thought or a single Bible verse and turn it into a hymn text. And so one evening, after a conversation about closeness or nearness to God, using a single verse from the book of Hebrews, she wrote the text, For I am thine, O Lord. Hear now the lyrics as the tune is played for us. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice. And it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer, drawn to thee. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer, and with thee, O oh God, I commune as friend to friend. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. So draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy and now as we recommit ourselves to Christ and recommit our time to his service, thank you for continuing to support Christ's ministry here at Habity Grace United Methodist Church. And now let us pray in silence as we ponder where Christ is calling us to invest our time. doxology today. Our doxology today is a translation of a 7th century Latin text. Hear the lyrics of this ancient hymn of the church as Chris plays for us the tune. Christ is made the sure foundation. Christ the head and the cornerstone. Chosen of the Lord precious Binding all the church in one, holy Zion's help forever, and her confidence alone. Laud and honor to the Father, laud and honor to the Son, laud and honor to the Spirit, ever three and ever one. One in light and one in glory, while unending ages God of time, 
You have blessed us with night and day, seed time and harvest, seasons of work, seasons of play, and seasons of rest. Thank you for the gift of our hours, the basis of living, earning, and serving. Help us dedicate our days to you, Lord, the giver of time, through Christ, our eternal Redeemer. Amen. And now, my friends, this is a day of new beginnings. Time to remember and move on. Time to believe what love is bringing, laying to rest the pain that's gone. Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Go in peace. And may God's grace go with you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.